Around the world, it has been a rough week for the environment. This is Meanwhile In. Meanwhile, in Romania, specifically in the deep parts of its old growth forests, numerous forest workers and forest rangers have been murdered due to illegal logging. Forest ranger Liviu Pop Pop was responding to a tip off about illegal logging when he was shot dead with a hunting rifle this week. It's believed it might have been his own rifle that he was attacked, disarmed, and then shot with his own rifle potentially. Another was found dead in his car last month, a short distance away from an illegal logging site in Pascani Forest District. Forest Ranger had suffered serious head injuries reportedly caused by an ax. Three people, including two teenagers, are suspects in the case. Uh, there have been believed to have been already 16 attacks like this just this year. And it's believed they can all be traced to this illegal logging effort. And environmental groups are really worried about the lack of what, what's being done to deal with this. One, Gabrielle Pawn, head of environmental group Agent Green says, the forest mafia has tried to kill me several times. They broke my ribs, cracked my head open, and broke my hand before I managed to escape by running. We are deeply concerned that forest rangers and activists like us are being killed while investigating illegal logging in Romania. And already that, that logging has you know, had obviously a human toll, but also a toll on the forest as well and its success in uh, those efforts. Research by Greenpeace Romania estimates that Romania is losing as much as three hectares of its forest, uh, total forest cover every hour as a result of degradation, illegal and legal logging, including swaths of its pristine old growth forests. These are forests that literally were developed shortly after the last ice age and they have continued effectively in that same shape for thousands and thousands of years. But now powerful business interests who don't feel constrained by the law, by any sense of morality, are attempting to do whatever they can to take these down for their own economic benefit. Meanwhile, in Meanwhile, Brazil is suffering from a massive oil spill that has despoiled literally 2200 kilometers of its beaches. Now this might come to a lot of people here in the US as news because despite the fact that this is a massive environmental catastrophe, there's virtually no talk about it whatsoever by our media. Also, oddly enough, barely any talk of it by the Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, who is doing virtually nothing. Kind of gives you a little reminder of what happened when the Amazon was burning. So nobody knows at this point where the oil is actually coming from or why it keeps washing up on Brazilian beaches. Social media has been bombarded by videos of volunteers rolling up thick globs of oil and sand and putting them into plastic sacks. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro sought to blame first Venezuela, then a criminal action to scupper a major oil tender. He has repeatedly attacked environmental protection agencies as a fines industry and has yet to visit affected areas. So all of that seems like complete nonsense, and it is. He loves conspiracy theories, especially when it allows him to ignore damage that's being done to the environment. So right now there's this auction coming up next month for oil prospecting rights. And so he says that environmentalists who are worried about that oil exploitation in the future have decided to despoil thousands of miles of Brazilian beach with oil to jettison that deal. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This is actually a reminder of the cost, the environmental cost of oil exploration and a preview potentially of the sorts of disasters that could come if this auction goes through and more development actually happens. Now, yesterday, uh, Bolsonaro's vice president announced that 5,000 more troops will be dispatched to help clean up the spill. But for many Brazilians, the response was too little, too late. It has been going on for weeks and weeks, and there was effectively no even acknowledge of it for quite some time. With the Amazon, now with the oil spill, if you're in Brazil and you care about the environment, you should be very worried about the approach of your government to these sorts of problems. Meanwhile, in Meanwhile, in Canada, a local artist had a free wall and decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do some art. I am going to commemorate the amazing activist work of Greta Thunberg by doing a mural of her. And so they produced this. However, you might notice that this over her face, it says this is oil country, which is hardly the message that an artist who cares about Greta Thunberg would spread. That is because someone added to the art. 
A CBC journalist was shooting footage of the mural on Sunday morning when a man named James Bagwell or Bagnell walked up with spray paint and began painting stop the lies, this is oil country over the teen's face. And yes, he did this in front of a video crew. He was so confident in what he was doing that he didn't care about the fact that the news was already there videotaping it. He said to the journalist, this is Alberta, this is oil country. My father has worked in the oil industry. We don't need foreigners coming in telling us how to run our business, support our families, put food on our tables. And let me just briefly say that there are a lot of differences between the United States and Canada. But when I hear a quote like that, I think, eh, we got some people like that too. I sort of understand where that sort of regressive thinking is coming from. Yeah, it has been oil country and they have done quite a bit of damage in exploring that oil as we have here in the US and around the world. And at some point it needs to end. The fact that we've been doing something wrong for a long time is no reason to continue doing it. But try to get that through to Bagnell. He said that as soon as he saw photos of the mural, he decided to go down and deal with it. He said his father who recently died would have been disgusted to see the portrait of Thunberg. I don't know Bagnell, I don't know Bagnell's dad. I would assume that out of all of what we just talked about, if he was disgusted about anything, it would be that his son is spending his time, his free time defacing art to attack a child activist around the environment. That would be my guess. He says, by the way, James Bagnell, just shut up until you have solutions. And he's not talking there to all environmentalists, he's talking specifically to Greta. And that proves to me that he has not listened to a single word that she has said because she has said, don't listen to me, listen to the scientists. And the scientists do actually have some solutions. One of them would be stop exploiting all of the dirty fossil fuels in Alberta as well as around the rest of the world. That would certainly be a start. But actually pursuing that is a little bit more complicated than getting some spray paint and going down to deface art. The artist, by the way, isn't actually that bothered by this. He says, after all, it is a free space and people will do what they will with it. Hopefully they can find something more productive in the future. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.